Just Fairies, the podcast about fairies. Welcome to the Just Fairies Fairy Podcast. If you are interested in ships, visit justfairies.de. Here you will find many videos from the world of fairy shipping. Development and construction of the Fairy Deutschland of the German Federal Railroad. In December 1969, the German Federal Railroad, abbreviated DB, made the decision to have a new ferry built. The old Deutschland, from 1953, was no longer up to the requirements of the German-Danish ferry line puttgarten Hodby. The original plan was to have this ship built, as usual, at the shipyard Hovaltswerke Deutsche Werft, HDW, in Kiel. However, only preliminary work could be done there. Then DB had to cancel the shipyard because it had specified a fixed date. They wanted the ship to be available in time for the start of the Olympics in Munich 1972, to better cope with the expected increase in traffic from the north. Hovaltswerke was unable to meet DB's schedule requirements. So DB commissioned the Nobiskrug shipyard in Rendsburg for the construction, which promised to be able to meet the delivery date and concluded a construction contract for the number S673 in May 1970. The main dimensions were to be 144.10 meters long, 17.70 meters wide, and a tonnage of 6,180 gross registered tons. HDW's preliminary plans were incorporated in the Nobiskrug designs, although a large number of new aspects had to be taken into account. Extensive changes were the result. The whole design of the ship was adopted. However, discussions with DB's planners revealed significant commercial reasons for reviewing the remaining concepts. Several problems had to be solved. For example, reducing the vibrations that occurred during reversing. Naturally, vibrations occur when a ship travels backwards. The ferries of this ferry line in particular had to cope with relatively long backyard journeys. In order to provide the passenger with a pleasant ride, Similar to that of the forward journey, during the reverse phase-out of the Danish port, intensive tests were carried out at the Hamburg Shipbuilding Research Institute to determine the propeller, hull, and rudders, in addition to the usual model tests. At the same time, it was necessary to determine the effects of stopping and maneuvering characteristics. Many other problems had to be overcome by the engineers. The choice of the number of blades on the propellers was one of them. Initially, it was assumed that a four-bladed propeller would have better stopping characteristics than the six-bladed propeller, which was more advantageous in the tests. Here, the opposite turned out to be true after the tests. Drag and propulsion tests with elastic stern tubes, six-bladed propellers, and the chosen rudder variant showed that it was possible to reduce the ferry's power requirement by 22%. The contracted speed for the ferry, fully loaded to a draft of 5.9 meters, was 18.2 knots. After the trials in Hamburg, the design now available could achieve a speed of 19.9 knots and even 20.5 knots at full power. Naturally, the new ship was to be fitted with a bow rudder to improve its maneuvering characteristics. This was to be unbalanced and installed in a gapless arrangement. The engine system corresponded to automation level B, which required an engine room manned during operation with remote control for the main propulsion system and central control. Major problems were caused by the width specified by the ferry berths, from which no deviation was allowed. The main dimensions were therefore fixed in their essential parameters. For stability reasons, the superstructure from the car deck onwards was made of light metal. Since there was no in-depth experience with appropriate welded joints, the transition was riveted. The rail deck, which was divided into three parts by the longitudinal buckheads, had a usable track length of 345 meters, so that it could accommodate 12 D-train wagons and seven passenger cars. With a correspondingly different choice of loading, the capacity of the wagons and road vehicles naturally varied. Even a partially operable suspended deck was installed. Above the railroad deck, there was a car deck, which was also suitable for caravans it could accommodate a maximum of 118 cars or 50 cars with trailers. The passenger deck had three restaurants, a money exchange office, kiosks and information office, and a kitchen area of which was designed to be much larger than on previous ships. Here, too, the experience of the previous ferry operation was used, which had shown that more passengers than originally assumed used the crossing as a welcome break for meals. 
All three restaurants together had 463 seats. The boat deck above was fitted with a kiosk, a perfumery, a conference room, and crew cabins. A light gray paint scheme up the rub rail visually set the ship apart from the water. The dark blue paint on the hull, a first for the DB ferries, was intended to provide additional safety when traveling in fog. Overall was the result of a ship that was beautiful in design and lines. In designing the interiors, the architect's desire was to work with functional materials and color zones. This was to provide a better overview for the passenger. The ferry had room for a total of 1,500 passengers. The ship was divided into 14 watertight compartments up the rail deck and corresponded to a two-compartment ship according to Sala's 60 Chapter 2, which means that in the event of a leak, the floatability of the ship had to be ensured when two adjacent compartments were full. Major problems were caused by the low initial stability of the new ship, identified at the project stage. In the construction stage, therefore, additional weight had to be saved in the upper superstructures. Particular emphasis was placed on the safety of the new ship. Future personnel were trained in special courses. In addition, a safety brochure was prepared. Fire protection met all necessary criteria. Fire warning systems pervaded the entire ship. A gas warning system could measure explosive gas concentrations and report them visually slash acoustically on the forward bridge. A warning system indicated harmful carbon monoxide mixtures. In environmental protection, the German Federal Railroad wanted to set a good example as a state-owned company. All solid waste was shredded on board and later put ashore. The fecal matter entered reaction tanks via collection containers, where it was rendered germ-free. The installation of a UV light drinking water sterilization system was to ensure biological purity of the drinking water. Continuous monitoring with visual alarms rounded off the hygiene measures. Special installations concluded four elevators, a trim and healing system, and a car traffic light and shunting system. In addition to the forward bridge, an aft bridge was also installed on this new build. The nautical equipment was state-of-the-art on both conning bridges. The arrangement of the control consoles and equipment was optimized in close cooperation between the shipyard, experts, and the German railroad. The forward bridge was equipped with a Raytheon 10cm radar unit and a combined unit of the same make with 3cm and 10cm wavelengths. In addition, echo sounder, gyro compass, and a deck and navigator were installed. The propulsion was diesel electric. The reason for this was high maneuverability and optimal adaptability to the respective schedule situations. A diesel engine type from locomotive construction was used to generate the mechanical power. 9 MTU type MA 12 volt 656 TB 60 volt type engines, each rated at 1839 kilowatts which corresponded to those of the DB218 locomotive series, drove four diesel generators, which in turn supplied the power for the two electric drive motors. After a successful test run, the new DB flagship was handed over from the shipyard to the owner on June 3, 1972, then made presentation trips to Hamburg and, a week later, on 17 June 1972, to Kiel. Finally, six days later, DB put the new building into service between Puttgarden and Rodby, where several hundred people gathered at the German ferry terminal to welcome the new building. This was the Just Ferries podcast about the construction of the train ferry Deutschland. If you want to learn more about ferries, please visit justferries.te. Here you can find movies with the ferry Deutschland, 